Coming up in the third hour, I'm going to open the phones up and get into geopolitical news, all these hyped up terror alerts and more. Even the New York Times is admitting is being done for political purposes to sell the idea of the NSA targeting the American people. Reuters admits they're, they're giving local police NSA data on petty crimes. And then they have, to, they have the police go and create a fake investigation to then go get warrants once they've already spied on everybody. I mean, this is just, this is unbelievable. And I told you this was going on because of my police sources. It's only done at first in like LA, New York, uh, in the last decade is a rollout. Now they're giving even middle-sized cities access to NSA stuff. And of course, 2,000 companies, it was reported, are given access to incredibly classified stuff and your private info. And all sorts of, of, of stalkers and people are using it. Uh, I mean, this is insane. So, so we're going to be talking about that uh, coming up. We're also going to be uh, speaking for the rest of the hour with uh, Dan Bongino, the amazing Secret Service agent who's such an eloquent speaker and running for political office uh, who stands for liberty and, and is the kind of person we need in office. He's like a, you know, a, a Ron Paul 2.0. So we're going to be uh, talking to Dan Bongino, who, who left as a senior guy going up the you know, top of the ranks uh, because he just couldn't sit there and hear Obama go, there's no tyranny around the corner. If you got a business, you didn't build that. Somebody else did telling school kids socialism's good. We're going to be talking to him, though, about embassy security and things because he's a real expert in that. Uh, obviously, uh, being involved in that type of stuff in the overseas trips of the president. So we'll talk to him in a moment. Uh, first off, a few of the sponsors that make this national broadcast possible. I only have sponsors I believe in. So be sure and check these sponsors out. Supernatural silver pathogens are becoming increasingly dangerous, causing deadly outbreaks in hospitals, nursing homes, schools, and restaurants. Antibiotics and ineffective because people are overusing them. The new uh, Supernatural Silver, they've got a new upgraded formula, offers a safe and effective means of killing pathogens where antibiotics and other drugs fail. Yeah, like the, the, their nasal spray. Uh, you, I mean, you put the stuff up your nose and you got a sinus infection. Uh, the antibiotics don't work. Others doesn't work for me. This does. For more information on how Supernatural Silver can protect you and your family, go to SupernaturalSilver.com and use the promo code Alex Says one word, for 20% off, SupernaturalSilver.com. And finally, eFoodsDirect.com is doing it again because folks have been begging for it. Free shipping on one of their most favorite lines of foods. They've got specialty lines, you name it. You can give them a call at 800-409-5633 to ask about the Alex special. Or go to eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex. Every $329 you spend on food from eFoods Direct, you'll get a free 24-day food supply. The Patriot Pack Plus, get free shipping. Free shipping is the big deal with storable food. This is the company to use. Limit 10 per order. Patriots and everybody need to be self-sufficient. Government is stockpiling food, weapons, you name it. Why aren't we? eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex. Give them a call today and win, win, win. Support the broadcast and getting the word out. Now, there's a lot of things I want to talk about with our next guest, Dan Bongino, uh, who, again, is running for political office in his state. And we should all support him. But first off, I wanted to get an update from him just overall since he resigned in disgust, which we're seeing more and more of people in the military, people in defense contractors, people in Homeland Security, Secret Service. They just cannot be part of the shadiness that Staff Sergeant Biggs was just talking about. Uh, and, and, and they just can't be part of it. And, and it's kind of a catch-22 because then the good guys are out of it. So that kind of leaves the bad guys. But overall, it's the right moral decision to make. But I wanted to ask him, what does that mean is there's an exodus of people that you would call uh, you know, pro-America, pro-liberty, pro-common sense. And again, he's running for Congress, ladies and gentlemen, in Maryland. And he joins us, and we're going to give you uh, his website as well. He's running for Maryland's 6th uh, District. And uh, I, I want to call him Congressman right now. And I'm told uh, they know you're a threat. I'm told you got your house burglarized. So uh, that shows that somebody's certainly concerned. Yeah, it's not the first time, Alex. And thanks for having me, by the way. They've... Uh targeted my my cars my wife was eight months pregnant they had uh put someone put nails in, in two of her tires and four of my campaign staff same thing and campaign headquarters broken into but you know that's kind of what they do and i just roll with it uh 
you know, I'm 6'1", 215 pounds, so I'm more worried about my family than I am myself. But, you know, that, that's what they do. It, it's thuggery at its finest. And, unfortunately, when you speak out and you stand for, uh, for liberty and you stand against, and, 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 you know, I just want to make this one point. It, it's not just against the Obama administration. I think you know this. There are Republicans out there, too. Who Absolutely. Care any less about liberty? There are some out there who care more about their own power than liberty too. So it's a bipartisan indictment of the system. But you definitely put a target on your back when you do that. Absolutely. And Scripps Howard News Service, AP, you name it, have picked up all the burglaries and harassment uh, that you're going through right now. I mean, that right there is the certification that you're the man right there. And and the campaign's going well, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you know, when you, listen, when you're shaking people up, we've got uh, we've got a few left wing outlets come after us. Um, for everything from shocker meeting with conservatives in D.C., uh, a left-wing media outlet went after us and said, yeah, he meets with conservatives in D.C. to advance conservative causes. How horrible. Scandal. You know, uh, that we uh, had some uh, meetings with another uh, journalism outfit, too. I mean, they, they make up stuff. It's really, it's really terrible. And, you know, if you only knew, folks, what went on behind closed doors, I, I mean, you would be disgusted. If you think this government is, revolves around a citizen-centric model, and that public service is a priority. And I've got bad news for you. You're living in a fantasy land. I mean, there are some good people out there, don't get me wrong, but they're, they're very few. And, and you mentioned it in the opening of the show. More and more people are just turning up their, you know, they're, they're turning their head in disgust and walking away and finding out, not walking away from making a difference, but walking away and finding out a different way to shake up the system because it is unquestionably broken. You know, I know you saw a lot of things, and you signed national security agreements, so you can't talk about it, or you'll go to jail like a whistleblower. Uh, but uh, I mean, when you talk about the dirty deals behind the scenes, we've got a good idea. It seems like the corruption's so rampant now, they don't even get in trouble. Uh, I mean, you said it was the speeches and things was one reason you left, hearing Obama basically push stuff that Mao would push. But I, I, I think that's obviously the main suspects. It, it would be other, uh, you know, feds coming in because of what you do know. Aren't you in probably danger because of some of the things you saw? You may not even know what they were that's got them concerned, why they're breaking into your house and your car and uh, places like that. I mean, uh, uh, my question is, if I knew all the stuff you knew, I'd probably go ahead and just say it because then I think that makes you safer is what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, you know, it's not a, not a bad point, but, uh, you know, I did, swear an allegiance and, and, and my, you know, was, my oath means something to me. And outside of the things I saw, which were blatantly unconstitutional, which I have no obligation under my oath to the Constitution to keep quiet, outside of those things, you know, obviously they're personal things I keep quiet. But, uh, you know, I, I'm, this isn't full bravery on my part. You know, I, I mean it, Alex. I'm not sitting here trying to, you know, to, to sit there and pound my chest. But I, I just don't worry about it that much. I mean, my family and I took an enormous financial hit to do what we did to walk away, uh, you know, my FEC records are public. You can look yourself. You know, we certainly didn't get rich off any of this. But the country is at a turning point. I mean, I mentioned this last time I was on your show. This is a real turning point. I'm one of those fictional turning points where people just like to rile you up. Oh, we're at the turning point. This is it. I mean, we are moving down one of these paths where your liberty is being treated like a commodity you can't exchange. It's traded amongst people and faux party officials and insiders and cronies. Your liberty, and yet, oddly enough, the one person out at the table is you. So, you know, you have to say to yourself when you're someone like me on the inside, you know, and, and I honor and, and I respect the Secret Service agents who, you know, these guys and men and women are fantastic. They put their lives on the line, for, you know, for, in a heartbeat for, these, for the president and everyone else they protect. But I just didn't, I felt kind of like a parasite, like I was, you know, just sucking off the system, and then I wasn't doing everything I could do, and I, I, I kept imagining a eulogy in a world that was different than the world we know today for the worst, and someone saying, well, what did he do to change it? And then my kids looking up and going, well, I don't know. Well, Dan, I can tell you right now, they're not going to have any problem answering that question now. Dan, I admire you so much. I don't say that to be sappy, because I've gone through some of the same things you've gone through, the break-ins, the physical attacks, the death threats, where they're listening to your phone, and, and tell you what you were talking about so you know it's the government or contractors. And for people that haven't experienced this, they don't know. And people say, aren't you scared? You know, why do you go, you know, out in public? Why do you go do the things you do with no bodyguards? And you know what? I, I, it's not even about being afraid. I've chosen a side, but it's not even choosing. I'm not a thug and a criminal. I'm not a scumbag. I'm not part of their gang. I don't even have free will, really. I have to 
confront and oppose these people. And I think that's what you just crystallized there is that, you know, you're not beating your chest saying, I don't care, I'm not scared. It's beyond courage. It's you know you cannot commit the world to evil and standing down is joining it. Uh, silence is consent and you will not be part of the dark side. Yeah, I mean, we're not, we're being ruled. We're not being governed anymore. You know, what made this country great and exceptional and different than every other place in the world is the respect and the dignity of individual liberty, a constitution that limited them, the government, not you. But I think what, unfortunately, a lot of the soccer mom crowd um, is ignoring is the fact that your liberty is really disappearing in real time, and it has a real consequence, Alex. I mean, look at your economic liberty. What do you think taxation is? If you work for $100 a year using round numbers, and now upwards to 47 to 50 percent of it is taken by the government through sales, income, uh, capital gains, corporate, all these other taxes, then 40 percent of the time you work for someone else. I mean, that's not liberty or freedom. You know, when you look at Obamacare, do you folks, do you really think that was about health care? Seriously, I mean, do you really believe that that was about health care? I assure you, having lived in this bubble, it had nothing to do with health care. It has everything to do with taking away decision, life or death decision making away from you and putting it in their pockets. I mean, we've never had any kind of education liberty. Public school system doesn't think it's, well, it's, it's to death school? panels. It's socialist eugenics, absolutely. And it's buying and selling our liberties, trading them away. I want to get into the Benghazi situation because you're somebody that was the head guy when Obama went overseas. So you you know exactly what went on there, and it's coming out missiles to Al Qaeda and the stand down. But before we go there, let's right now make this important. You put it on the line. You didn't talk to me before you came on the air. You were coming on about the embassy stuff. I'm saying this now. Everybody in Maryland needs to stand with Dan Bongino and his family and get him into office. This is a real guy, folks. You can feel it. You can see it. Your gut tells you. We've got to put this guy in Congress with an overwhelming vote to overpower their electronic voting machines. These are the type of people we need there who have a conscience that that's their most valued possession is being honorable. And uh, how do people donate? What's the best site to go to? Bongino.com? Yeah, thank you. B-O-N-G-I-N-O dot com. I appreciate that, Alex. Thank no, you. people, but they need not just donate. They need to come out and support you in Maryland. Uh, I mean, I'm reading the campaign's going well. You're getting support. Yeah, we've, we've been very lucky. The, you know, last time we ran, we started with nothing. I had two donors, me and my father, and we built the largest donor list in Maryland, one of the largest donor lists in the Northeast Corridor. I mean, we really fired up a grassroots base. And, you know, it was funny, Alex. People would say to me when I would give speeches, because, you know, I never... I never wrote them. I would just go out and speak from the heart. And people would say, wow, I've never heard anything like that before. And I said, you know, that's the sad part, You know, that all I did was just tell you the truth, and you thought it was good. It wasn't good. It was just unusual because you're so not used to hearing the truth from people that when a guy gets up there and speaks with some passion about what's really happening, you think it's, quote, good. There's nothing good about it. It's just the truth. The truth has no agenda. And we just built a, a massive army of people. So starting this time was obviously a lot easier than last time where we had to build it from scratch. Now we have a solid base of support. We have a huge social media following on Facebook and Twitter, and it really helps me get the liberty message out. I try to tweet and Facebook about liberty at least two or three times a week, and it's never scripted. I come home, I'll, I'll usually put on some music, and I will just go and tell people how I really feel and what I saw and what I think is really wrong, and importantly, how we can fix this disaster we're in now. Absolutely. And you, uh, folks can go to Bongino.com and find your Twitter, find your Facebook. Everybody should follow you there. In fact, I'm going to tweet out during the next break from Real Alex Jones at Twitter for folks to follow you. And I hope listeners, uh, libertarians and constitutionals don't tend to be big Twitter people, but we all need to become big Twitter folks because sometimes I'm out there in the field. And that's all I've got to get a message out. And the same thing for Mr. Bongino. And the fact that they're coming after him, breaking in his house, his car, harassing his family, uh, right there, folks, we've, I mean, we just had it on uh, Staff Sergeant Biggs with, with all the other Special Forces guys uh, that were uh, friends with uh, Michael Hastings who know they killed him, and they're all scared, folks. 
And it just shows how dangerous this is. But if they put a bullet in me, I want 10 more to stand up in my place. If they put a bullet in Bongino, you've got to do the same thing. I mean, enough is enough, folks. The war for this republic is now. Now, shifting gears, speaking of bullets, they put bullets in Ambassador Stevens. Knowing what you know about embassy security, a lot of it classified, running foreign operations when the president would go overseas and visit embassies. What is going on from a trained eye when you see that? Well, what I found out about this is there have been communications between Al Zawahiri in Pakistan and in, in Yemen. Uh, uh, you know, one of our uh, one of the main AQAP operators in Yemen. But the brazenness of the communication strikes me. Here's what I mean: these guys are, are very, and I don't mean this qualitatively, please, but they're very savvy in a devious way with their communications. They've learned everything from using. Drop boxes in emails that don't formally send it. They, all kinds of. I don't even want to give anybody else any ideas, but ways to manipulate cell phones so that they can't be traced. They are very savvy in that respect. The fact that they likely knew they were being monitored, which of course they know, and brazenly made these kind of communications, knowing it was going to get out there, um, says to me from having gone through this over and over and having read volumes of intel reports and overseas ops was that this was really in the end operational stage, and any fear of having the operation broken up um, was, was probably um, uh, not really, didn't frighten them enough to, you know, to communicate. This thing was ready, ready to go. But the problem, Alex, is I don't really trust this administration anymore with their information. And, and they've lost all credibility between Benghazi and, and we don't even know what was going on there with potential gun running. I mean, they really don't have any credibility. The only thing that makes me believe this is, this could be really credible, and I hope it's not, is that a lot of the foreign embassies have shut down, too, and we're usually pretty reluctant, especially after Iraq, to be sharing information and intel with foreign embassies and foreign governments. Sure. Well, I mean, Obama's bad enough, and I know they'll crucify you if you agree with me. He's bad enough, and, and even the New York Times says these terror alerts are being used for political purposes to distract from NSA to turn a blind eye and let some jihadi group fund it up the chain. They're funding them in Syria and Libya to attack a few embassies as a political distraction. This could also be a false flag Obama's about to pull. Well, this NSA thing, uh, you know, they need to get the attention off this thing so badly. And I, I really, I cannot believe, I mean, really, there's a part of me that is having a hard time digesting the fact that there are people who call themselves Republicans out who actually support this program. You know, folks, information in the hands of a government without an independent arbiter reviewing it, Remember, the Constitution, you know, secure in your effects, right? Um, it, it, without a warrant or an independent, because I don't consider the FISA court, a, I, I, it's not, it's a rubber stamp, okay? Former Secret Service uh, agent Dan Bongino, stay there, sir. We're going to come right back to you and have you finish that point on Benghazi. And Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the new Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda, and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland and in Ukraine and other areas, starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing this same thing. The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught 
going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal, and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. They are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. Lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow, uh, plum trees, grape trees, they will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. We can literally, not just buying these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got to counter their genetic war against us with original real crops developed over eons on this planet. We have the lowest prices we bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action. The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit lovers with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. Plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. <laughs> Gino, senior Secret Service agent, until he resigned, he ran the overseas operations. That's the most important thing the Secret Service does uh, when the president uh, goes anywhere is the overseas visits. They, they see that as the most dangerous, at least from what I've read in the newspapers. And you were telling me some stuff off air about your sources in the Secret Service currently. I don't know how much you can say on air, but just, just say what you can about, about Benghazi, where it's going, about the current threat. Uh, and the points you were making about Obama's credibility. Well, first off, you have an extremely loyal audience. Thanks to those who just followed me on Facebook. That's a record, uh, considering I've been on a number of radio stations, that's a record amount of Facebook likes in the last <laughs> couple of minutes. So thank you, folks. That's very nice of you. Yeah, my, a lot of my intel and military sources have been talking to me over and over. I have, you know, I have a book coming out in November on this topic. And, folks, if you don't believe there was a stand-down order here, uh, it, it really, you're, 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 you're living in a fantasy land. I just hate to tell you this, but there, there's a team out there, Alex Fest, Foreign Emergency Support Team. It, it can, here's an analogy. Imagine with the Secret Service, God forbid something was to happen to the president, right? No one has to be told in the Secret Service to respond. You just go. That's what you do. Well, that's what the Fest team does, the Foreign Emergency Support Team. They've responded to these types of incidents before. Why they didn't respond, they should have set up red flags everywhere. It was brought up in the Capitol Hill testimony, and the, pre the media has largely ignored it. I wrote an op-ed piece in the Washington Times about this, because I've got friends who have been talking to me about this. These guys were told not to go. There is no question in my mind this was politically motivated. I hate to tell you that, folks, but if you're ignoring this, you're ignoring it at your own peril, because that fabric of security that those guys, Secret Service and DSS provide, has been absolutely shredded. The cavalry always showed up in the past. And that promise has been broken. It's very dangerous. Why would they do something like this to show their hind end to everybody in the government? Because the whole Pentagon knows it was a stand down. They watched it from the Predator drones. The ships all know. I've talked to a lot of people off record who were able to even see it. Some major fits were thrown. People resigned. Major generals. You name it. Uh, why would the Obama administration do something like this f 
protecting the jihadis uh, there in Benghazi. But there's only two explanations here, folks. One, they are the most incompetent administration in presidential history and literally didn't know what to do. So he just, we, I mean, we already know he went upstairs to the living quarters without any resolution to the incident whatsoever. So that's explanation possibility number one, which I don't believe. The second explanation is they knew exactly what they were doing, and given the proximity of the presidential election, they could not have out in public that, one, there was a terrorist attack, and, two, their foreign policy in Libya had collapsed, and, three, a CIA operation was going to be uncovered. So the second uh, fork in that road is that they knew exactly what they were doing, and for political reasons, they let these four guys die. Folks, bad news, either, either one of those answers. Is, is, is horrific for any leader. Either one is treason and uh, either one is completely uh, criminal. And now CNN, London Telegraph, they're all reporting CIA people have told them that no, we were giving uh, surface to air anti aircraft missiles to Al Qaeda. Yeah, and Al Qaeda, it doesn't, a lot of this doesn't make sense when you think about it. And there have been some people hinting around this now that why, if we were running these guns and these surface to air missiles and these, these uh, advanced weapons, to Syrian rebels who were embedded with al-Qaeda, I don't think anybody disputes that, and those are they're talking about at least. Why would al-Qaeda, through Ansar al-Sharia, attack the complex? There may be an Iranian Hezbollah axis here that a couple of people are starting to hint around to, which would open up a whole different can of worms. But again, you can't trust anything that comes from this administration. They've blown all their credibility. I mean, they put Jay Carney up there. You know, that's an interesting point. Show. Stay there. we got to come back to five more minutes with you, and I appreciate your time. Iran does not want those missiles getting uh, into Syria because once Syria falls, Iran's next. That's actually an interesting point. That's what your sources are saying? That could be what's going on? Yes. It doesn't make sense, Alex. Why would al-Qaeda attack an operation funding al-Qaeda in Syria? It doesn't make any sense. The vested interest is with Unless the you want to get rid of the ambassador and the witnesses. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. You know, I could talk to Mr. Bongino for a long, long time. He is so interesting. Dan Bongino, Bongino.com. I'm Alex Jones with Infowars.com. Um, but I'm going to get him back for a full hour here in the near future so we can take phone calls from folks. He's a very interesting fellow, and he can tell Secret Service stories that aren't classified. And I've got stuff like Maryland. They wanna, uh, they've they got a rain tax and stuff. I mean, this is just shows the insanity. But he's running for Congress there. You got cut off by the break. We only got five minutes here. Now, uh, you were getting into, the as an investigator, the forks in the road. And that's exactly what I've done with Congress people and other investigators and FBI people we've had on air and uh, you name it. Uh, is that in an investigation, there's no doubt there's a stand down, there's no doubt they're lying, there, and then you just have to look at the facts that goes from bad to worse, uh, but go, go ahead and, and complete what you were saying. Yeah, and the nonsensical statements by the administration, and, and the, the, frankly, some of the folks in the, you know, in, the, in the upper ranks of the military who said, well, we don't send people into, and these are not the rank and file military guys, these guys are really upset, they're the ones you're probably talking to, I know the ones that are calling me, these are the guys that wanted to respond. That, you know, we don't send troops into, you know, the unknown. Really? Not, that You already sent the ambassador and these, these, these three others that, that died, these, these patriots that died over there into the unknown. So you don't send our military and guys that want to go in to save them and protect them when their mission is to, is, is to you know, wrap themselves in the flag. The oh, I mean, it's total right? bull. As you said, the default... If a submarine sinks, they launch the submarine rescue crew. They don't, it's default. Or if the president's attacked, the Secret Service goes into action. Or the State Department has their units. It's just a total lie. Folks, you know, you're being manipulated. I, I, I don't want to sound conspiratorial here or scary, but there is a crop of people, this, 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 this tyrannical group of insiders, crony capitalists, Politicians who only care about the next election, consultant class folks, and elected officials, some from both sides, that their only interest is in preserving this system. Their only interest, I mean, why if we think about it, Frank Wolf's initiative to move this select, special select committee forward to get subpoena power on Benghazi. Why hasn't everyone in Congress signed on to this? 
What, you don't want? That's because you don't want the answers. They don't want to tell you the truth. You're being manipulated through a series Just of like on NSA, it turned out Congress knew about it all, went along with it. They wanted to act like they didn't know. You know, they have a name for this. Uh, it's organized crime. It's it's a gang. Uh, but, but oh, no, that can't, you know, there can't be gangs in our government. Yeah, there can. Historically, it's called tyranny. Right, and Alex, if this NSA program was so fantastic, right, and it was worth collecting data on every single American, by the way, which is an absolute travesty. Don't tell me it's constitutional, okay? That is absolute hogwash nonsense. This program, well, why didn't we stop the Benghazi attack? You know, why didn't we stop the Boston attack? The answer is because if this is just lazy, bureaucratic ineffectiveness. And I'll tell you what, it's based on, too, just so people know, this whole metadata thing, is based on a concept, folks, 34 years old, 34, the Smith versus Maryland case. The metadata that they were talking about in that case doesn't even really exist anymore. They're, they are evaporating and eviscerating every single... Yeah, they're calling all of our privacy metadata when it has nothing to do with that, using that term to deceive people. Right. I, I, you know, and I, I've said to folks over and over again, here's what's going to happen. Let me paint a scenario for you quick here, because I, I was an investigator. I saw this so from the inside. You give government information, it's going to be abused. It is not a matter of if, it is only a matter of when. What's going to happen is they're going to need, say, so target A to get to target B. Target A didn't do anything. I'll target tell you what, B stay there. Yeah. Uh, five more minutes. we got to go to break. That's a yeah. short segment at the start of the hour. Come back and finish your story, and then we'll talk about the campaign briefly and the book that's coming out, and then let you go. And then, folks, I'm going to get into the travesty of foster care, the state-run agencies. Sevenfold, the Justice Department admits, more dangerous to be in foster care than in anybody else's custody. And all the kids that are dying from parents are having their kids taken because they get caught with a joint. And then the kid's dead. The state kills him. We'll be right back. Our viewers have demanded it. So now you're going to get it. More pro Second Amendment gun shows in the month of June. What we've learned is you cannot hide behind an eye beam when there's a 50 cal present. and arms, 50 cal ammo review, and more. Coming in the month of June to the Info War. Folks, coming up all over the country, it's happening all over the place in Austin. We didn't plan this. I wish I'd have known about it. I would have supported it. Overpasses for Obama's impeachment nationwide protest. Uh, are a huge success. Uh, it, it, we've got photos and video going up. Our reporters are out there right now. We had a reporter going home sick today and uh, just saw these banner hangs and Peach Obama over the NSA. Very exciting. That's the type of message to send. Uh, Greenwald says NSA supporters exploiting terror threats to kill Fourth Amendment. Yeah, that's like saying a bear goes to the bathroom in the woods. Uh, dead of night, Amber Alert uh, scares Californians where they take over your phones and TVs turn on now, I and mean, it's like out of poltergeist or close encounters of the third kind, but it's it's the government taking over your phones and uh, continuing documents reveal holders' travel expenses exceeded $4 million in four years. Feds visit Michael Hastings' house day before his death. That's from our military sources. He said he was totally scared. This is a guy who'd been in heavy combat uh, in huge battles. They said they'd never seen a member of the press with that much courage. Yeah, because our evidence is Hastings wasn't who he appeared to be. He was probably CIA. But continuing, um, we're going to be looking at all of that and looking at the shame of foster care and some big developments on that front. But finishing up with uh, the oh, senior uh, Secret Service agent on Obama's overseas trips. Uh, he is running for Congress. You can go to Bongino.com. Dan Bongino uh, is here with us, a popular guest. And he was saying during the break, you know, since when did uh, freedom get so hard to sell? Well, since the uh, media and the establishment sold out, but I think the awakening has started again. You were getting into the whole NSA uh, situation and uh, who they're targeting and what they're doing. It came out in Reuters yesterday that they're giving it even to local police. But you were telling me off air, police you know around America are really starting to wake up. So uh, putting bookends on this interview, uh, getting into NSA spying, what does that uh, really mean from somebody that's you know, been on the inside of this? 
Yeah, you know, I like telling stories and allergies because they make it real. They make it bleed for people. You know, you have to make it real and material or else they don't feel like they're losing anything. What's going to happen is one of these days, here's a scenario I'll paint for you. You're going to be needed in an investigation against your neighbor. Now, you've done nothing wrong, okay, but your neighbor says he's involved in what they, some terrorist act or whatever it may be or something they deem national security. They're going to come to you, they're going to knock on your door, and they're going to say, hey, here's a email you sent to your buddy Tony, whatever, 15 years ago, saying that uh, you were going to, you know, punch some guy in the face because he wouldn't move his car out from your house. Did you know that's aggravated harassment? And by the way, if you don't tell us what we need against your neighbor, the information, then you're going down for aggravated harassment. Now, you may say, oh, that sounds crazy. Really, it sounded crazy that they would target conservative groups for their IRS, uh, with their IRS histories as well. Folks, you give the government information, it will be abused. I am telling you, it is just a matter of time. It is not a matter of if. And one more point on this, Alex. What makes America great is you decide when the, the private self and the public self where that line is, okay? You know, this liberty versus security canard is a complete red herring nonsense, okay? You decide that. In totalitarian regimes, that's decided for you. Everything's public. They encourage parents to, to rat out on their kids, uncles to rat out on aunts. Every, there's nothing private. That's Everything's already dead. starting here. Yeah, and that's, the, that's what I'm saying. When they have access to your information, when, when you open your garage door in the morning, when I do, I know the public self begins, okay? That, you know, well, if you're doing nothing wrong, you have nothing to worry about. Nonsense. We're all doing something wrong. We're human beings. We're all fallible, okay? We decide, as long as your wrongs don't infringe on the civil liberties of others, you're left alone. That's the deal we have here, right? When I open my garage door in the morning, I know the public self begins. If you keep going down this road, you're going down now. That garage door is open all the time. There is no private you, and we are just like every other totality. Sure, area. sure, exactly. We don't live in glass houses because to be free, you've got to have privacy. Plus, this NSA grid and all these hackers they've hired, they're on record that they can plant fake stuff uh, in your digital file or... If you're running for office, use a medical issue you've got against you. They're on record already doing this. I mean, take all the governors and people they found with hookers, and I'm not saying that's a good thing, but they were sitting on all that until they wanted to burn somebody when they were exposing banking corruption. And so, again, it's going to be used selectively, and that's the word I've gotten from Congress and it's come out the cloakroom has been bugged, is that the Justice Department is using people cheating on their wife 10 years ago, uh, people joking around in an email saying, I want to kill my neighbor or whatever. They are, are using that for blackmail right now. Right. The greatest commodity in Washington, D.C. is not the bankrupt Fed. It's not gold. It's information, folks. Information is the greatest, most valuable commodity you can have in the bubble of Washington, D.C. I promise you, you forfeit it and you give it up without a fight. I'm telling you, you're going to rue the day you failed to do something. I mean, fight back, organize, sure. do what you need to do, but you better get involved or you will regret the day. I promise you. Well, here's another analogy. Uh, we hear about these fools. Uh, these uh, who would go on Facebook and say, I'm going to Cancun for Christmas. I'll be gone six days. Here's where we're staying. And the woman you know, was, look, my husband just bought me a 10-carat diamond ring. Right. The thieves are waiting. They know what hotel you're at. They've already cased you. They break in your room and steal the ring. That's a real case. Let's expand. You go, I'm going to see my grandma for two days. Look what I got for Christmas. Again, where you live, the thieves come and break in your house. It's not that you've done something wrong. Bad people will use your lack of privacy to abuse you. There's a reason we lock our doors. There's a reason we pull our shades. There's a reason we have fences and walls. It's so that bad people have to go through something before they get to us, and they don't have intel on us, rendering us defenseless. Right, and they come at you from two different arguments. A lot of these so-called you know, Republicans who support this, they come at you from the, well, it's going to make a safer argument, which is, is nonsense. It's garbage. Again, it's, it's investigative laziness. And then the liberal side comes at you from, it doesn't matter, the end result's the same, but they come at you with the argument that the anointed ones, as Thomas Sowell used to call them, you know, in his book, Vision of the Anointed, the anointed ones should run your life, should have access to all your information, because they're just so much smarter than the stupid people like us, Alex. Either way, it doesn't matter. The end result is the same. The personal you is never personal. It's all public. And again, that you might as well, that whatever, that flag doesn't mean to you what it means to me. 
if you believe my information is your information just because you say it's so and you've declared it constitutional. It's not. Read the document. I show you it's pretty clear on those on, on those on those portions. Your personal effects should be secure. And right now, they're not. I'm not giving the key to my house to any government official for any reason whatsoever. Well, that's the other side. Look how secretive government's getting while telling us that we shouldn't have any secrets. It is incredibly transparent. Final question. Now, folks can go to your campaign and learn more. Uh, foot soldiers there on the ground in Maryland absolutely got to get behind this guy and the and and, and the person he's running against uh, just absolutely needs to be defeated. Bongino.com, uh, another Ron Paul in the in the in the, in the Congress, folks. Uh, in your gut, do you think we're going to turn the tide? Because I know historically, it's only when things get really bad that people finally get out of denial. Or is the tyranny so sophisticated and has known the awakening was coming that they've already organized themselves to be able to stop us? I mean, what does your gut tell you about this fight? You know, Alex, I'm always an optimist, and I've, I've seen it. It's bad. It's ugly. It's ugly on both sides. But, you know, we've been through a lot, and I do believe that some divine providence has led this country to be so different. There's no reason we should be as exceptional as we are other than the fact that there's there's got to be some heavenly intervention here. I, I think we're going to fix this. It's going to take some time. But, folks, remember, there's only power in now. You have to do something, not talk. You have to get involved. If we're just talking, that's called whining. We have to get involved. I took a huge hit to my life to do this. I'm not asking for your sympathy or your sorrow, but I'm saying do something. Talk is not enough. So please get involved. And, yes, I think we are going to change it because, listen, liberty should not be such a tough sell. Certainly hasn't been for me out there on the stump. We've really changed a lot of minds. That's right. Uh, people tend to overplan things and then rationalize. If you know it's right to stand against something, whatever it is, gut up, do it, whether it's small, medium, or large. Little things you know, grow into big things. Commit to freedom. Commit to American liberty that made us so great, and, and we can go back to being a prosperous, good nation. Uh, it's time for the good men and women who've been doing nothing to stand up, and it's time for people that have been doing something to redouble their efforts, because we can clearly see where this road is going is not a good place when you turn this around. Uh, Dan, thank you so much for the time, and I can't wait for you to get into Congress. Thanks, Alex. It was an honor. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. All right, folks, there he goes. That was a good interview. It was only going to be like 20 minutes long, but I held him into this hour because uh, it's just a great guy. You can tell he's a great guy, and you can tell that he's got a lot of courage, and they're breaking in his house. They're breaking in his business. They're breaking in his car. They're messing with his wife. And um, and all, all I can tell you is, is that I, I, I really worry about that because if I ever catch somebody physically threatening my family, I'm going to, I mean, it's just, it's over. And I, and I think they know that. That's 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 the one thing I've got to control myself with, uh, with these people. I am so sick of the scum that have overrun this country. And you heard him. He said there are cliques, bipartisan, of technocrats and insiders and lobbyists and, and special interests that literally know what they're doing. And they want to block us from having them bankrupt the country so they can get even richer at our expense. They're putting a police state in so we can never get the country back. It is a conscious move, a conspiracy. There's thousands of charges per city a year of conspiracy to do this, conspiracy to do that. But, oh, when government does it, it doesn't exist. No, there is a globalist corporate conspiracy against common sense and against individualism and against the family. I mean, turn on television and the dramas and movies. It's all about your anti-family, anti-male, anti-liberty bull because the only people that are allowed to be male are the people that work for the system, and they're all super male, trying to dominate us. But then we're all supposed to just cower down here and run around in fear. Well, I'm not doing it, okay? You get a double middle finger from me to the New World Order, and I'm sorry to talk like that, but that's what it comes down to. I am going down with the ship. I am not bowing to you murderers. Because let me tell you something. Bowing to them is giving consent to all their crimes, and that's why I have no fear, folks. These people are hurting innocents all over the world, and I'm sick of it being done in my name, and I am not going to be part of it. I do not need those spiritual bowling balls hanging around my neck. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.